The White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce and SCC TV are proud to present Your Business Matters, dedicated to your business needs. The White Bear Area Chamber is a nonprofit business organization serving as advocates to the White Bear Area and its business community. Now, here's the Executive Director of the White Bear Area Chamber and the host of Your Business Matters, Tom Snell. Welcome to Your Business Matters, brought to you by the White Bear Area Chamber of Commerce. Each month, we interview community leaders and local business owners so you can be informed about the developments in our community. I'm pleased to welcome Dale Grambush, the volunteer chair for Manitou Days and Market Fest. Both of these events highlight all the wonderful aspects that make White Bear Lake a major destination point throughout the summer months. Find out about White Bear Lake's summer festivities all on Your Business Matters. Dale, thank you for uh, joining us today on our uh, Chamber Television program. And the first question I want to ask you is, there are a multiple of number of summer festivities in White Bear Lake that make up the Manitou Days and Market Fest. They're two separate entities. And what are some of the differences between Market Fest and Manitou Days? Why are they, why are they different? Sure, Tom. Well, thanks for the invite, for allowing yes. me to come on the show and share a little bit. So, yeah, two different activities. Really, I guess what I hear a lot of times is Manitou Days is a celebration of the lake and the community, mm -hmm. where Market Fest really stemmed from the idea of promoting businesses, promoting business in the downtown. So I think you have uh, a festival like uh, Manitou Days, a number of different events that are held mm -hmm. over a three-week time period, usually from mid-June till July 4th. Yep. And then Market Fest, which actually started out, you know, being maybe an eight or twelve week festival, but now it's a seven week festival, Thursday evenings from mid June to the last Thursday in July, right. six to nine in, in the evening. So, two different things, but yes, it sometimes is confusing. You know, when is uh, when mm -hmm. does Market Fest end, yep. or when does Manitou Day end? But there, you know, I would agree with your earlier statement. It just shows that there's a lot of activities that we have here in White Bear Lake. Sure. Many of them for our community to enjoy, many to bring tourists yep. or people into the downtown or into the community. Mm -hmm. You know, both of these events, the event at uh, Market Fest draws thousands of people into downtown White Bear. And then the Manitou Days venue uh, also has a number of people that participate in its activities. Can you give me a little bit of historical perspective on both Manitou Days and on Market Fest? I can give you some historical okay, ideas. That's good. You know, I'm not that old, Tom. I'm still pretty young, I thought, but I'll give you some history. So okay. I remember uh, we actually moved my office, my dad and I moved our insurance agency into downtown Waverly Lake in April of 91. And that happened to actually be the first year of Market Fest. So I remember there were a lot of vacancies in the downtown. And one of the, yeah. I believe, critical issues were how were we going to in, get renters back in and fill those buildings in downtown. And a bunch of studies were done. So this study. is kind of this comprehensive vantage point that the city had with some of the business owners in downtown White Bear and the uh, Main Street and all of the other venues that happened at that time period. Correct, a part of that. You know, there was still the White Bear Lake uh -huh. Economic Development Corporation. In fact, there's the group that actually started mm. Market Fest. Oh, it did? Yes, I believe so. I believe they could kind of take credit, or that's at least who the downtown business group got the event from. And then Manitou Days is much older. You know, Manitou Days, that's been around for maybe over 50 years. Oh, wow. Um, so I believe that's been celebrated for quite a while. Market Fest has been around for about 29 years, I okay. believe, coming to 29th years. Now, now uh, with Market Fest, did it start out with a boom like it is today, or did it kind of slowly grow into the type of event that we currently have? Yes, I, I would happen to say it's pretty much grown into the event. I mean, it's gone through some, what I might call, significant changes or changes mm -hmm. throughout the event. I remember, I believe, again, I don't have history in front of me, but it used to be that... Uh, a smaller footprint when it first started. Mm -hmm. Again, a different number of weeks. You know, there was one year there was construction done in downtown, so they actually changed the dates of right. Market Fest to put it into the fall. I would say when Main Street took over the event, I think in 1998, 
You know, we mm -hmm. hired a director to run the actual event, so that was a big step, trying to find funding and sponsorship. Mm -hmm. And then, I believe again, probably in about 2006, I believe is probably when the mm -hmm. next, I would say, significant change was made. Uh, we went pretty much where we stayed at seven weeks. A lot of discussion, you know, yeah. should it be eight weeks, should it be five weeks, should it be shorter or longer? Uh, but staying on Thursday, yep. not changing it to a weekend, that was kind of mm -hmm. uh, where we went. We really changed the number of bands we have at Market Fest. So a lot of times we have new bands, but we have 14, 14, two stages of live music. Wow. So we book 14 bands, 14 entertainment sessions. And that's kind of, uh, we've stayed with a local focus, try yeah. to on the bands. Then, of course, making sure we have a good mix. So we've, we found that if you have too many food vendors, that doesn't work. Uh, you know, you, you just have to have so the right mix of you have to be kind of, of you have to really monitor the type of vendors that you have for, so that it has an interest with the public when they come uh, into White Bear. Yes, you know, because everybody likes their favorites. So when I right. get there, you know, I want to have my favorite food to eat, but I maybe want to try something different sure, also. Sure, sure. So you've got to have all those changes. You know, oh, Tom, one of the other things that we talked about for quite a while was do we allow food trucks into the event? You know, we have room for mm -hmm. some of the food trucks, but they're larger. They usually take up two locations rather than one. And we have allowed some food trucks, but it used to be the old pop-up tents were pretty much yep. what you saw all through the event. But nowadays, so we have the advent of the food trucks in the area. Again, trying to find a new food with a good mix. Um, try to contact a lot of, the, or yep. accept a lot of the nonprofits from the yeah. area. And then, of course, we want booths that are interactive, yeah. not people mm -hmm. um, just, you know, we want vendors out there yep. that are going to engage the public. Now, you've answered uh, some of the uh, things with the next question I have, but from your perspective, how would you say that these two communities really uh, highlight and help White Bear Lake? Again, um, very, very much helpful, I believe, to the downtown. Uh, four to five thousand people come to our downtown on a Thursday evening. Every four to five thousand. So that, that's what we have been saying for years. You know, obviously outdoor weather events, so good weather. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have an event. Uh, I believe that's been great for our downtown. It really kids yeah. have grown up with Market Fest now with over thirty years. Mm -hmm. uh, so I believe that's been good for the downtown. And then you Manitou days. You know, we have a number of businesses that put on events. Uh, the children's fishing contest. You know, I've got a brochure with about seventy events. And people can pick up these brochures all, all over White all Bear. All over town. Manitodays.com yeah. also. But you know, you you'd read through here and you find a number of businesses that are putting together activities so that the community can come out and enjoy. So it's them. both something it's, that highlights the value of the community and fun and family festivities at the same time has a significant way to help businesses that want to have a, a strong relationship with the with our community. Yes, I would say I would say Market Fest has actually done a few surveys also. Maybe oh, one okay. thing Tom that we hear often is some businesses that have been around for a long time, established businesses, yeah. they maybe say, well hey this is ruining our regular Thursday activities, Thursday businesses, yeah. and then we'll hear from new businesses going, oh my gosh, this is the best thing. You brought all these people in front of my store. I'm a new business or newer business, and you've let them be, uh, you know, see what I have to and, offer. And longer, longer, uh, in a longer way of looking at it, too, is people coming into downtown White Bear after Market Fest is over, it gives people an idea of what the downtown area is really all about and the dynamics of the different types of opportunities that they have, oh, different yes. types of storefronts. Right. Yeah, you just can't use what happens on Thursday night right. for the effect of Market Fest. Yeah. Because really, it's not just what the customer mm -hmm. did on a Thursday night. It's really what, what happens yeah. the rest of the time. You know, we have a charming sure. downtown, um, restaurants to eat outside, inside, experience shopping. Uh, we have a lot of, uh, I'll call them independent business people. Yeah. They obviously, they, they don't want their store in, the mall, so they they want to you know they want to design their own business plan and be able to execute yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Now uh, I want to focus on for a little while on one of the major events that we have during Manitou Days, and that's the centerpiece. A lot of people would consider the centerpiece, and that's the parade. Yes. And uh, first of all, what day does the parade fall on? The parade falls on Friday, June 14th, which happens to be Flag Day this yes. year also. So June 14th, 
6.30 p.m. in downtown, starts in downtown and, Waverly. And would it be smart for people that want to go to the parade to get there a little bit earlier than 6.30 to find a good place to sit? Yes, I, I would recommend getting there a little bit before, um, before 6.30, definitely. So you'll see sometimes early in the morning, actually, people who maybe set up chairs yeah. in the downtown area to kind of reserve their spot. But mm -hmm. be there a little bit early. We have great viewing in the downtown, traditional streets. Yep. Then we have, Tom, we got a little road construction on the mm -hmm. parade route. So we have a parade detour. Yep. But then the uh, parade snakes its way through uh, downtown, goes mm -hmm. out 4th Street. And this year, it looks like it's going to go to Stewart and then make a right-hand turn down to Lake Avenue. And then take a left-hand turn onto Lake. Okay. Which I always, that's one of my favorite places to watch the parade. Now, it, you are right up to the parade when it's on Lake Avenue because it's only a single lane. Right. You know, you have the citizens' homes yeah. on one side and the pathway on the other. Mm -hmm. And it's a great opportunity so, to be, like, up yep. close on that and, parade. And approximately how many um, uh, cars and other types of vehicles participate in the parade? Floats. Well, well we, we believe we look for about 100 units. Wow, in the that's a lot. So, yes, that's a good size parade. Yeah, if I was if I was a uh, business person in White Bear Lake and I wanted to promote my business to a large number of people, it might make sense to contact somebody about getting a float in the future. And is that possible for businesses to use that as a way to uh, promote what they do if they're in our community? Yes. In fact, not, it, not only possible, we have a number of businesses that do that. So mm -hmm. yes, you want to look for you know, that, that time frame, um, usually early February, early March, where the parade applications go online, manitodays.com, yeah. to find the parade application. Submit your parade application early. They give you a little bit of a discount. Mm -hmm. uh, also, if you submit early, you usually end up more towards the mm -hmm. front of the parade. But definitely yeah. great opportunity. There'll probably be I don't know seven to ten thousand people maybe that along many. that parade route. Well, that's what I've heard. Okay, yeah. I don't know that I can people. document okay. it. So let's assume there are seven to ten thousand people. I don't know if you can answer this question, but I have not heard of any local parades. You know, um, you know, local communities outside of maybe St. Paul and Minneapolis. You know, the Winter Carnival and mm -hmm. the. Uh, summer events in downtown Minneapolis that really approach that number. I would imagine that the parade in downtown White Bear is one of the signature events in the state of Minnesota as far as the number of people that come. I mean, that's from my perspective. Mine too, but you know, I do have some friends from around different areas that maybe argue with me on that point of what but parade is actually, well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They just don't realize how so, nice our parade so is. Seven to 10,000 people uh, come into downtown White Bear to see that or uh, along the parade signature route. parade. Yes. In Are fact, there... that way, I've got one more thing on that, Tom. Yeah. This year, Graham's Bakery has purchased, I believe, seven. 7,000 U.S. flags because of the parade happening on parade wow. day. They plan on passing those out on parade day. So as we go through the parade, we're just going to have to look to see so how many people are holding wonderful out wonderful parade flag. with old-fashioned patriotism, patriotism and uh, And that will maybe goodness. give us a number on how many people are actually at wow, the parade Wow, that year. is absolutely phenomenal. If that was supposed to be confidential information, can we just cut that out of the tape? <laughs> All right, okay, well, whatever, yeah, right. we'll, we'll, we'll look at that very uh, uh, carefully. Um, now, uh, beyond the, the parade, uh, which is, again, the signature event, I think, for Manitou Days, are there some other types of uh, events during Manitou Days that really seem in the past to be uh, significant attractions for people? Well, yes, you know, I'll probably forget some. Maybe I'll check my brochure a little bit. But That's fine. The Vintage Classic Boat Show that happens. Uh, I think it's its 14th annual Classic Boat Show. This is out of the water boat show that happens down by Commercial Bay. Okay, uh, so, so that would go. be over uh, by uh, Tally's and the... Um... Kowalski's, yes. Yep, yep. Yeah, so this is the 14th year of that. Uh, Pat oh, wow. Oven volunteers a lot of time. He brings in a lot of you know, classic boats for that, so 14th. That is actually on Saturday, June 22nd. I'd have to say, well, that's a highlight. At what time? That 
wow. is from 10 till about 4 okay. in the afternoon, one of the day. Another event that uh, I've taken my kids to, grandkids, nieces to, is the uh, Community of Grace Garage, Manitou Day's Garage Sale. Oh, wow. That, that happens down at Community of Grace Lutheran Church, and that's going to be on... June 14th, and it's listed as the 19th annual uh -huh. uh, community garage sale from 8 until 1 o'clock. Uh -huh. I would have to say that is one of the uh, events. Sand castles and creature contest by White Bear Center a for the Arts. A castle. Yes, yeah, so that happens <laughs> on a Saturday morning. Uh -huh. uh, that's June 14th. So do, do, do they also. get judged then? Is it, yes, or? they get judged. Uh -huh. yeah. Not quite my style, but you can do a yoga on the beach too beforehand if you yoga want to. Yoga on the beach before right. you build your sand castle. Castle, yes. Okay. That would be. Then uh, I would say those are some of the other events that I can think of uh, right off the top of my head. They have a beach dance, right? Beach dance after the parade. Uh-huh. Um, sponsored by the White Bear Lake Rotary. Uh-huh. Explore White Bear. And uh, yes, that uh, that's great. Could draw from eight until eleven. Yeah. Now, um, are there uh, there? There's a lot of things going on uh, with these events. A lot of work that happens. Are there? If somebody from our if from the business community or others wants to get involved in these two events, are there uh, basic volunteer opportunities that people might have? Yes, you know, we look for a lot of, we're virtually a volunteer run organization here. So we do mm -hmm. have committee meetings that usually meet on the Fridays yep. uh, leading up to the event, a couple times a month in uh, March, and then April, May, and June meet on Friday morning at City Hall at nine o'clock. We help really a lot of the planning. We have a number of volunteers that help what we call distribution day. Mm -hmm. So what happens is this brochure gets printed up. We have about 19,000 of them along wow. with our posters, and we have volunteers that take a shopping bag and go to a specific area of stores and hand out posters mm -hmm. and brochures um, that is pre the event. But then, yes, during the event, we look for, you know, uh, as far as the activities go, the parade looks for volunteers early mm -hmm. in that afternoon. And then yeah. Market Fest, the same type of thing with people can volunteer or work for that uh, yes. opportunity? Yep, there you would want to check with marketfestwbl.com yep. and you could mm -hmm. email us if you have uh, would like to volunteer. We get great support from the triad. They volunteer at the mm -hmm. two information staff, our two information booths mm -hmm. at uh, MarketFest. And then we also have uh, the police department. I'm oh. sorry, I just lost the name of the group, oh, CERT, that sure. help man two kind of tents and just in case of first aid or a lost child, they help volunteer with that. And then mm -hmm. Boy Scouts help volunteer with cleanup yep. at the end of the event. And that would be one of the areas I would imagine that's good to have people involved and would be the cleanup after the, would that be after the parade? Uh, after the parade, we actually have a volunteer group that has yep. said that they will clean up after the parade. Mm -hmm. With the Market Fest, because it's um, seven weeks, we usually have a we actually have a paid staff that help with cleanup yeah, afterwards. Imagine. So, and then of course the city yep. comes in early and mm -hmm. does uh, cleanup also. And is uh, who? How do you raise the money for these two major events? How does that? How do you? Because I would imagine that you have a. I think you have a paid staff person that also works on these two uh, opportunities. Is that correct? Well, we have a paid director for Market Fest. Right. And then we have some people that we pay because of the duties they do with mm -hmm. the Manitou Days. But virtually all of Manitou Days money is yeah. raised by through sponsorships, so local businesses sure. that help put on the event. Market Fest has also sponsorships, and then it also has vendor fees. Yep. So we have the vendors that help really pay for that mm -hmm. event also. Now, again... Um, looking at Market Fest, mm -hmm. if I was a business owner and I could see and I could envision several thousand people coming every Thursday night, I think that would be absolutely an incredible opportunity to get some visual opportunities for my company. Yes. Yeah, I think you've been there as the chambers yeah, have yeah, booth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I've seen where you have maybe put up a marker board, right, and asked yeah, for well, suggestions. Yeah, it was a lot of fun and, doing that, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, those little innovative ideas. Yeah. 
So I wanted, if, if, I'm, if I'm this business owner and I wanted to do something like that, uh, and you mentioned you're looking for certain types of companies. I don't know if you're at, at will to mention that, but what kind of companies would you be looking for in the future that mm -hmm. might want to have a booth at, at Market Fest? Well, we typically look for businesses that are based in White Bear Lake, specifically right. okay. downtown that White Bear Lake. Sense. So that's, yep. that's the first kind of criteria. Then businesses that will uh, come and do some type of activity. So maybe we don't look for a, a company that just wants to do lead uh -huh. generator. What we really want to do is have a booth that's maybe interactive okay. so that maybe parents or children are learning something about sure. your organization. And we have you know, good examples of a lot of those. I don't know if mm -hmm. you've been to the school district to yep. get a uh, uh, sticker or a tattoo. Yeah. Um, you know, other places have uh, the spinning wheel mm -hmm. or give out samples, those type of things. And, the, and people can contact, uh, again, with the Market Fest to learn more about that. Correct. Now, final question I have, Dale, is if somebody wants to check online about Market Fest and uh, Manitou Days, how do they go about doing it? That's uh, manitodays.com will be for Manitou Days, and marketfestwbl.com would be for Market Fest. Thank you very much. Uh, now I have a quick announcement about some important chamber and community events that are happening. Mark down June 13th to attend the Chamber Lunchtime Networking, 11.30 to 1 p.m. at Donatelli's, located at 2692 East County Road E. Also, join the thousands of people who come out to watch the signature premier parade in downtown White Bear Lake. It starts at 6.30 p.m. on Friday, June 14th. Be sure to get there by 6 p.m. I'm Tom Snell. Thank you for watching Your Business Matters. You've been watching Your Business Matters. For more information on this program or the White Bear Area Chamber, visit whitebearchamber.com or call 651-429-8593.